on. Okay, hello everybody. We start again. Uh, today we are going to have Christiana from Romania, far away from us in Indonesia, and she's going to talk about the role of parents in remote learning, the topic that we haven't been discussed uh, quite uh, further. So I believe that all the participants here, most of the participants here, not only teachers, but also parents. So um, we are going to start now. Probably I will just hand it over to Calm first. Hi, Vanita. Thanks very much. And hello to all of you at home. I just wanted to say that we're delighted to have this 10th webinar as part of this series with ITAL. And we're delighted to welcome Christina from Romania, who's going to share some of her tips for parents, because we know an important, uh, you know, crucial person or people in this situation is the role of the parents at home. And many of you are also parents uh, for your own children. So you're providing that support to them and being that link between the school and the teachers and, and, and your, your children. So thanks for joining us again for another webinar. We're gonna start now and I'm gonna hand over to Christiana who will introduce herself and, and get us going. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome everybody. Um, I'm very happy to see uh, that there are so many people here, many people from Indonesia. Thank you very much for having me back, but also people joining us from all over the world, uh, Greece, uh, Romania, and some other countries. Uh, um, I, I noticed that. Thank you all very much. And um, let's start by telling you how I got the idea that actually we need some specific support for teachers. Um, my perspective is twofold uh, because um, uh, I, on the one hand, uh, I am a teacher educator. Um, I started working as a teacher educator in 2007. In 2010, I became an e-moderator and my whole life has changed, uh, changed, has changed a lot in these the last uh, 10 years for the simple reason that at the time when I started, I was a complete technophobe. I even refused to have a mobile phone at the time. And once I became an e-moderator, I realized that technology is just a medium of delivery, is not the purpose, so to say. So once I understood that, I became friends with technology. And for the last 10 years, my life, um, my work life has um, focused mostly on the online environment. I deliver online courses for the British Council all over the world. I have worked with thousands of teachers um, on six continents. My latest projects um, involved working with uh, teachers in Palestine and Jordan. Um, and I'm very happy to see that um, a side effect of these online courses is that people started to feel more familiar with uh, online um, uh, delivery. And now they can continue their classes online, even if they didn't have any idea before we started working together. So that is a great uh, satisfaction to see that we can actually make a difference in people's lives. Um, on the other hand, uh, I'm also a parent. Uh, my son is next door and I can listen to him talking to his English teacher. So you can understand that uh, he is also uh, doing online classes with his classmates. So when we all started um, with, uh, with this online learning, I realized that people started to offer a lot of support to teachers and that's great because we need it. But there was very little targeted at the uh, parents. So I made some videos with tips for parents and I was surprised by um, the reaction to, to these uh, videos. I made three videos in Romanian and three videos in English. Um, and I realized that there is a real need for something like this. So this is why we are here to dig a little uh, bit deeper and to see uh, what we can do uh, as parents. But uh, if you are not a parent, if you are a teacher, uh, please rest assured, uh, you will actually find very practical uh, things you can apply to because uh, the ideas that uh, I'm going to present um, can be applied both by parents and teachers. So our focus today is the role of parents in remote learning. 
uh, we actually have four sections in uh, today's webinar. First of all, we'll think about uh, the feelings we have. I think it's very important to start um, from this uh, uh, side of life these days because we tend to be overwhelmed by feelings. Then we will start thinking about what we can do as parents um, in terms of uh, organization and attitude, so some general tips. We will then focus on asynchronous platforms and finally on synchronous platforms. So hoping that this sounds good to you, let's get started with parents' feelings. Now, before I ask you about your feelings, because I'm going to do that, I want to show you a video. You may have seen it because it became viral, uh, which uh, kind of gave me the idea that we need support. So I'm going to show you a short video. It's a minute and a half. It became so viral. Uh, there's this parent ranting about how she has to uh, help her children who are studying online. And um, we're going to see how she feels and then we come back. Okay, here we go. Just a second, please, to make sure that you can hear the lady. Um, it's translated in English, so you will have, you will have no problems uh, following her. Here we go. תקשיבו, זה לא עסק, הלידה מרחוק הזה. באמת, זה פשוט לא, זה בלתי אפשרי. זה לא נורמלי. מהבוקר, אנחנו רק ביום השני, מיליוני הודעות בוואטסאפ, יש לי ארבעה ילדים שיהיו בריאים, תדמיינו כמה וואטסאפים, כמה מורות לכל ילד, כמה מקצועות לכל ילד, יש לי רק שני מחשבים בבית, הם רבים מהבוקר על המחשבים, אחד המורים של הבת שלי חי בסרט שהיא בשמונה בבוקר תשב לראות אותו על המסך, היא בשמונה בבוקר רק הופכת צד במיטה. מה נראה לכם? המורה למוזיקה של הבן הקטן שלי, היא שלחה תווים הבוקר. מה אני אעשה עם המידע הזה? מה, אני, יש לי הרכב של איזו להקה? אני לא יודעת לקרוא תווים! שנייה, אני מוציאה קלרינט ויושבת עם הבן שלי לעזור לי לו עם התווים. די, חבר'ה, מורים, תנמיכו, תנמיכו ציפיות, זה לא הגיוני. וכל היום, איך הילד מרגיש? איך שיצייר ציור? איך הילד מרגיש? הוא כל היום בפלאפון, טוב לו! ישנים טוב, אוכלים, לא מפסיקים לאכול. איך הוא מרגיש? שאלו אותי איך אני מרגישה. קורסת! אני עוברת מילד לילד, הנה מדעים, הנה מתמטיקה, הנה... חלאס, גם איפה אני יודעת את כל הדברים האלה? עכשיו הילדים שלנו יעלו עלינו כמה אנחנו סתומים. זה לא לעניין, באמת. אני יודעת להפוך שבר מדומה. גם, גם אם הוא מדומה, אני רוצה להבין משהו. למה צריך להתעסק איתו? הוא לא אמיתי, עזבו אותו בשקט. מה אני אומרת פה? גמרתם עלינו, זה רק היום השני. אם לא נמות מהקורונה, נמות מלמידה מרחוק. זהו, פרקתי. בבקשה, להוריד. להוריד קצב, תניחו להם. <laughs> okay, so this is the video I was telling you about. Probably you know this lady uh, because uh, her video was included in the official COVID-19 support site. Um, yes, exactly. It's so real. And you noticed I, I said uh, that we should start from feelings because we worried a lot about how uh, teachers feel, about how children feel, and it's the right thing to do. But we should not forget about the parents. They're in this too. So let's take a look at how we feel. Um, so I'm going to, to go back to my presentation and I have a, a few questions for you. And I would really appreciate it if you could answer them in the chat. Okay, so you see we have a wide range of feelings, I'm sure. Uh, I, I'm, I'm quite sure that we do not have the exact same feeling. So let's start by exploring a little bit these feelings. So how do you feel about your children learning remotely? And I'm really curious about uh, your feelings. I'm going to take a look at the chat. Do you share these ladies' feelings? Um, worried, tired, okay. <laughs> Some emojis. Shocking new culture, exactly, exactly. It has been a very steep learning uh, curve for, um, for parents. Okay, amazing, bored, happy, they're creative. So you see, that's why I said that our emotions range from complete fatigue to being enthusiastic about it. And 
everything in between. Great. So this was the first the first question about our uh, our feelings. Yes, dizzy. Sometimes it we can get dizzy from all this new information, all these new uh, things we have to help our children with. And where do you think these feelings stem from? What would be the reason? Is it the online school? Is it uh, the insecurities of the children? How could you explain these um, unfamil unfamiliarity with technology? Okay, the novelty of the situation. Sometimes it takes a, a bit of um, of time for us to get used to a new situation. Yeah, so uh, it might come from the fact that there's a lot of um, of work sent to our children, and uh, we don't know exactly what to do with it. It may be also because we are worried about our own jobs or we have to change the way we work and combined with managing the situation for our children, it's just too much. Yeah, our limited knowledge, the fact that things can be complicated, too many tasks, too much work, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's a completely new environment. So as you said, the novelty of the situation might, um, might explain a lot of these feelings uh, of frustration, um, worry, concern, fatigue, and so on. And um, finally, I just want to know exactly so that we, we can uh, discuss afterwards when we, I give you the tips that have worked for me uh, and my son, which are the main challenges that you face? I understand that some of you manage quite well. That's great. And I hope that towards the end, when I'm, I'll make sure that we have a few minutes where you can ask questions and also offer your own tips. Um, we can also discuss some of your tips. But for the moment, let's focus on the things that are a bit challenging. Internet connection, that can be a real issue. Yeah, the time. Time can be a challenge because we don't have time to, to uh, deal with our problems, not to mention the, the children's problems. Yeah, time management, okay. Oh, hi, 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 from India. <laughs> yeah, how to engage the children in the learning, that's a very good point, because if you become aware that all these things come for them, but they do not bother to really work on them, we wonder what can we do to help them. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so uh, arranging the, um, organizing their learning, uh, managing our own time, finding a balance between uh, learning and some free time because they can't be all the time, all day long online doing school tasks, right? How to guide them, the technology. Okay. Um, Yes, exactly. How to make them understand that now that they have access to their gadgets, they're not supposed to, pl to play, but to study. Exactly. I am with you. I've been through all, all of those um, feelings and all of those challenges. Uh, and let me explain a, a bit more about our family context. So uh, both my husband and I, uh, although we are both very familiar with technology, we, we uh, found it safe to keep our son a bit protected from technology. And although he's 10 years old, he doesn't have a mobile phone, he doesn't have his own um, tablet. Uh, and during the week, he didn't have any access to technology. He had limited time at the weekend when he used to play some games. Now the situation had to change. We had to make sure that he had his own laptop actually. And I was a bit worried about how he was going to manage. So that's why uh, I paid attention to what I learned from my experience with online working and how we can adapt those things, those strategies that work for me so that he could feel comfortable online as well, especially since uh, he didn't have too much experience. Okay, now, as we saw, many of us are worried about um, about how children cope with the tasks that the schools send them. And many parents refer to what is happening now, even uh, teachers actually use the same term, they use 
homeschooling to refer to this situation. Do you think we are talking about homeschooling or about remote or online learning? Which is the correct term to use? Let's see what you, you're saying there. Okay. Yeah, okay. So it's very clear that uh, you actually understand very clearly the difference. It's not homeschooling. Um, I was just thinking now that uh, two years ago, my son and I were stuck here in our mountain house. Uh, I said at the beginning that we are not actually in the city. When the whole situation started, uh, my, my husband stayed in the city to continue his work because he has to work face to face. But my son and I took refuge in our mountain house. We are up in the mountains. We have no neighbors. Uh, we made sure that we have uh, a lot of uh, options in terms of internet. We have uh, three subscriptions to internet because we need separate, uh, separate um, uh, networks for me, for him, and one as a backup. So uh, you see, we got organized. And I, I was telling you that two years ago, we were also stranded up here because it was so much snow, we couldn't go down the mountain. So the last week of school, two years ago in, in the winter term, we stayed here. And I remember my son used to say, uh, we're not doing homeschooling, we are doing igloo schooling because there was so much snow, he built his igloo. <laughs> But even then, it wasn't actually homeschooling. I did take care that he, um, he learned the same things that his classmates did in school. But we should uh, bear in mind that homeschooling refers to, indeed, a, a system that exists when the learners actually learn outside um, the public or private school environment. Um, and it involves a commitment made by a parent or a guardian to oversee their child or teen's education. Um, so it, it doesn't mean necessarily that you stay at home. It can just involve that the parent or the guardian takes care of the education and that can mean also trips or traveling or studying um, in different ways. What is happening right now is different though because it's not the parents who are in charge of the um, teaching and learning process. In this context, the learner and the instructor, you know, the, the source of information, the teacher, are separated by time and distance and therefore cannot meet in a traditional classroom setting. But the information and the learning materials are usually sent via technology. So you are very, very right to say that we are not dealing with homeschooling. We are talking about remote or online learning. Now, if the school did not um, send any materials for our children, and maybe there are cases where the school doesn't have the technology or the teachers are not prepared to do this and they don't do anything, I think it's still wise to do a little bit of homeschooling. And what would that mean? It would mean that you get the children, um, and when I say children, please understand that I'm referring to anything from preschoolers up to teenagers, okay? So let's take uh, children in uh, the universal definition of somebody who's uh, up to 18 years old. So uh, if uh, the situation is like this, you, you don't have any kind of materials and information sent by the school, you should still keep them active and uh, their minds should still work. I want you to suggest one, uh, one resource that you can use. Um, I find it interesting that many, um, many uh, sites, websites that are specialized in uh, um, support for teachers, focus on the teachers, but again, very little support for, for parents. British Council has such, uh, offers such su support. There is um, um, a special page dedicated to parents. If you look for Learn English British Council and you type COVID-19 support for parents, you will come across this page. Let me show it to you very quickly so that you can see uh, what we can find there. I find it a very useful resource if you are, especially if you are in a remote area and if, as I said, the school is not offering much, you can do something from this page with your children 
and you also are guided as parents. You are not left on your own. So you see here, uh, they suggest that you could revise a bit of the schoolwork that they did, but you can also do some fun things uh, with them or with other children. I think this is important to remember, and I will come back to, to this during my presentation. It's important to bear in mind that children also need to feel in, in touch, to feel that they're still um, connected with their classmates, with their friends. So you have very nice ideas of how you can uh, set up uh, all sorts of challenges between your children and other children from their classes, tongue twisters, all sorts of games, educational games. Of course, you can do some crafts. And I know that I need support when it comes to crafts. I'm really, really terrible at that. So I find this kind of support very useful. There are lots of vocabulary resources. You can find videos. Um, you can improve listening skills, reading. You can find everything here. And there are even 30-minute missions, like mini lessons, you can set up with your, with your children at home. And I repeat, this is all about you being supported. So if, the, if this is the case, I think this uh, British Council page works really well. And you also have more ideas like a diary, which would be good um, both uh, from um, the perspective uh, of learning and it can be a good therapeutical thing to do to keep a diary in these uh, difficult times. Great. Now uh, let's uh, focus on, uh, let's go back to my presentation. So that was the, the situation uh, that we could encounter if the school did not um, offer you much in terms of keeping the, the learners active. But hopefully you are in the same situation as I am and your children's school have already started uh, working online or they are about to because the situation seems to take longer. Um, I think uh, it's, we shouldn't see this as only a limited, um, uh, a temporary situation, something that will happen for a limited period of time. Uh, I was just talking to the manager of my son's school and he was saying, we have learned so much. We are definitely going to keep some of the things we have learned these days, even when we go back to school. So, you know, everything that we discussed today, everything that you have been applying, I think it will be useful in the next years as well. It's not going to be, people think that when the lockdown is over, we will go back to our previous normality. I don't think that this will happen. So it's good to bear in mind that we will have to deal this, with this for a longer period of time and lockdown situations may occur in um, the, the next uh, few months or years. So let's focus on some tips that might help us um, with uh, these situations. The first thing to bear in mind, I think, is that you are a parent, not a teacher. So unless you have to do some homeschooling, if the uh, uh, learning actually is organized by the school, you should focus on staying up the parent. And what does it mean? How is um, this related to the difference between homeschooling and remote learning? Well, it's related to the, by, by the simple connection that in homeschooling, the parent is also the teacher. In remote or online learning, we are the parents. We are not the teachers. Um, Okay, a little question for you and I'll go back to the chat. What do you think your children expect from you these days? What, you know, they often yell, mom, dad, help. What does that help cry refer to? What do they need? Yes, it's also true what our friend was saying there, that if you are a teacher, you might find it difficult to be just a parent. And I know I'm in the same situation, but you know what, I'm do what I do? I try, if I want to work with my son, for instance, quite often, we work together um, on preparing him for international English certificates. He has taken three of these exams and he loves them and he looks forward to taking the next one. So I do something besides school. I don't work with him on the materials from school. I work with him on extra things. Okay, so <laughs> yes, indeed. Some children may ask for technical support, for some company just sit with them and 
uh, and uh, feel that you are there for them. Uh, attention and care. They need uh, some uh, some devices indeed from you. <laughs> I like that answer that said they expect me to know everything. <laughs> That's not very realistic, is it? And we will talk about that in a second. Yes, support, being calm, exactly. Know what is happening. That's also nice. Sometimes uh, they uh, they are overwhelmed with uh, all this information, and they want you to follow and to understand when do they have to do things. And um, if they have exams, you should be informed about um, are these exam exams going to take place or not? Are they postponed? Has the syllabus uh, changed for for the exam? So you need help. Uh, they need help with that, and you are the the person who should help them. Okay, so they do expect a lot. Uh, we should also explain that all their expectations are not realistic, but we can offer some support. So in terms of parenting, what we can offer our children is some active involvement. It's what you said, uh, supporting them with information, staying in touch with the school and the other parents, offering help with technology, um, you know, be their hero, <laughs> very nice idea. They do want, they do need some support. My son is 10 years old. He's very, very tall. He's uh, almost as tall as, as me and I'm one meter and 80 centimeters high. So you can see that he's, we call him our little giant. It's kind of strange to see such a, a big boy. Very often he comes and he just needs a hug. He just wants to feel that I'm there for him, especially since his dad is not here. He's in the city, and I think he, he needs that reassurance that at least one parent is there. Uh, so we need to be there. We need to show them that we are, we are uh, there for them. In terms of technology, in terms of comfort, in terms of support, just show them that we are there. They also need uh, some kind of uh, structure. They need the regular schedule. Uh, 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 a regular schedule they need to get some good sleep because it's important they need good food uh, food that will help their brains to stay active uh, and their bodies to stay healthy so we shouldn't uh, uh, just let them eat whatever they want in this period of time especially since now we are home and we can cook and they also need some encouragement to have fun uh, maybe they are so caught up in the, this whole situation that they forget that they are children and they should actually make sure that um, they, they exercise, they do some physical effort and they also have some fun. Good, so these are some of the things that we can offer as parents and somehow in our minds we should make it clear for us where we draw the line between being a parent and not being a teacher. Yes, exactly. Sometimes they just need a good companion and a good listener. But on the other hand, we were saying earlier, we need to offer some, uh, some conditions for learning. We have to make sure that we organize a little space for them. Um, this uh, idea became very clear to me when uh, in the first uh, uh, school, um, uh, online school for my son, when the teacher said something like, okay, so we finished exercise three, we are going to leave exercise four for you to do at home. And my son said, but Miss, we are already at home. So, you know, we also need to change the vocabulary as teachers, but on the other hand, we have to become aware that uh, it's strange for children to do schoolwork at home. We should create a little space that becomes the classroom at home. Meaning what? It should be um, a desk. Uh, it could be, if you remember my first picture, that was my son. Let me quickly just go back to, um, to that picture just to show you his uh, little classroom. <laughs> uh, so this is his desk. He has uh, his uh, course books here, his books over here. This was his very first online class with his German teacher. So uh, they need a space that becomes classroom. 
and they should associate that with the classroom, with work, with studying, while the rest of the house should be their familiar space where they can relax and enjoy themselves. So just if you don't have a desk for each child, if you have more children, it's okay, but you should maybe make sure that they're in different corners of the same room or if possible in different rooms. Otherwise it can get quite noisy and they will distract each other. So create a little space uh, in, in uh, uh, the house where they can uh, consider that they're at school. You should also create a schedule or a routine. We will see in a minute if you have synchronous classes um, for the children, then the routine, the schedule is created by the school. But if not, you are responsible for creating that routine. And this is again a parent's task. Just like we organize their time, even when they go to school, we still need to create a routine. We still need to create a little, um, a little uh, regular rhythm for everything time for studying, time for playing, time for reading, time for doing something else. Um, and I also think that it's important to give them a personal example. For instance, if they study, if they do either synchronous or asynchronous learning, we should do something similar um, during those minutes or hours. So if you work from home, as many of you probably do, you could work. We, could, we should take advantage of the time when they are busy. Uh, because then we can focus as well. If you do not work from home, you can study, read, you should show them that you are also doing something similar. Under no circumstances should we do something that could distract them. I don't know, vacuum or do something fun with the, uh, the other children or um, with the other adults in the house. Let them focus, create a studying atmosphere do some studying or working uh, yourself. So this would be uh, the, the things that I noticed would help inducing a learning atmosphere in the house, in that classroom from home. Now, I noticed that uh, you also mentioned it, children associate um, technology with games. This is what they usually do with technology. So I think it's very important for us to show them another side of technology. And I'm not referring only to studying. Um, these days, lots of uh, cultural institutions all over the world offer lots of great shows. Uh, I can tell you what my son and I do. Uh, we are both very keen on theater and opera. So we have watched almost daily, if not every other day, we have watched the um, uh, free operas from the Metropolitan uh, Opera in New York. It's a fantastic opportunity because you see all these legendary uh, singers that you wouldn't get to see otherwise. Um, and we comment, we discuss, we, he's actually thinking about starting a sort of vlog with his reviews of books, shows, different things that he sees. So he really got, he, he said that he loves culture more than before um, because uh, he can now see very high quality uh, shows. But we also watch uh, uh, circus, for instance, online. You know, Cirque du Soleil offer uh, their shows online now, or theater, or even puppet uh, theater. And um, th there's lots of things you can do. They should understand that technology is not all about games. Technology is a whole world that can uh, actually offer you culture, some entertainment, sports. Uh, I have to mention that my son and I wake up every morning and uh, I have sub subscriptions to different uh, workout websites um, uh, and we do yoga together. So every morning we have uh, 15, 30 minutes together and then I continue working, he goes <laughs> working out and he goes next door to, to start his online classes. And they should also gradually start to understand that online can also represent work. And there are many job opportunities. There are many studies that show that our children will do jobs that do not exist yet. So our world is changing rapidly and they will get to, to do things 
that cannot be done now. But most of these things will be related to technology. So slowly, we have to offer them this perspective. Technology can be your future job. And you should understand how it works. You should understand how you can organize yourself so that technology is just, as I said earlier, a medium of work, an environment, and not the ultimate purpose. You shouldn't let technology uh, completely engulf you and uh, control your life. So it's important for us to show them a different perspective. They will understand it. If you offer these different, just a variety, show them what we can do with technology uh, and they will get it. My fourth uh, general tip is about staying positive. You all said that they need comfort and it's no use if we panic and we voluntarily or un un involuntarily send them that message that it's an unusual situation, we have uncertainties, we don't know what is going to happen and this might be very, very strange for them. They don't know how to cope with this. So, first of all, we should talk to them. We should, we should encourage them to tell us how they feel. We should acknowledge their feelings and let them know that it's okay to feel worried and to, to even to, to feel sad that they can't see their classmates, they can't go out whenever they want. Uh, I think that in today's world, uh, there's too much focus on um, shallow positivism. We don't have to stay positive at all costs, but uh, we also should also acknowledge those negative feelings and see what we can do about them. Um, three weeks ago, my son's school offered them um, one hour with their, the school psychologist. And I was working, I, I'm also an examiner for online exam bodies, and I was working uh, in my room, but I could hear what the teacher was doing when I took a break. And it was a lovely lesson. First, she asked them how they were feeling. She let them tell her everything. Uh, it was a way of, for them to, to get rid of all the news they heard on TV or they, they read on the internet and they couldn't make sense of, or they could make very good sense of. And so she let them talk for a while. And then she said, okay, how, uh, why do you think you feel this? And they realized uh, by answering her questions that they were exposed to too much information in a way. And then she said, okay, let's see what we can do. She asked them to draw a circle on a sheet of paper and she asked them to write inside the circle all the things that they mentioned that they could control and outside the circle, all the things they mentioned that they couldn't control. And I found something similar on the internet, on, on Reddit, and it looked kind of like this. It was a very successful activity and you can do it with your, with your children too. So it's very simple, one circle, inside the circle, what I can control, outside the circle, what I cannot control. And then just, maybe you keep it there, not just, you don't do it just for 10 minutes, you keep it somewhere and just tell them during the day when they realize they're facing a feeling or a situation to go and come add to, to, to the drawing. Can I control this or can, can't I control it? And they learn that the things outside them cannot be controlled, but they can be in charge of their emotions and they can learn how to deal with those emotions. You can find out what works for them. It's not going to be the same answer for, for all of them. It's a very simple activity, but it's very, very effective. And my final tip for this session is to um, respect the teachers and their efforts. So even if maybe you feel like the lady in the video, uh, we can recognize many, many common points. Do not make negative comments in front of the children because uh, even, if you, even, even if you don't say it out loud, if you feel um, something negative and maybe you talk to, to uh, your spouse, they will feel it, they will know it, and they will have the same negative attitude uh, when they go into their virtual classroom. So try to highlight the positive aspects of uh, the teacher's online work. What worked for us when Yanis was sometimes tired, we reminded him that because they have studied all this time online, if the other schools will have to go to school during the summer break in order to catch up with work, he won't have to go. So now he's very happy 
to do his work and understand he understands that you know it's school time it's still the second semester and in summer he can enjoy his summer holiday um, if the if, if if the teachers or the school uh, struggle with some aspects of technology and you can have maybe you are familiar with uh, a plat the platform they are using or you have an idea just talk to them directly and if you have any kind of issues just talk to the teachers to the school management to the other parents don't tell the children uh, about the problems you might face just try to keep them on track try to to show them that the teachers are to be appreciated for that effort. Great, so that uh, was the end of the first section, which was a bit general um, general tips. Um, I, I remind you, I, I don't want you to feel frustrated. Uh, I can't follow the chat while I'm presenting, but at the end, I promise uh, we will uh, look at your questions and we will also uh, uh, take some of your tips and some, some of your strategies. Now, it, it looks like uh, most schools um, did not find solutions for synchronous learning and many schools actually just use asynchronous platforms. So let's look at what we can do as parents uh, in order to help our children cope with asynchronous platforms. And by asynchronous platforms, I mean add everything. So from email to WhatsApp or Vibe, Viber or um, uh, just uh, Google Classroom, Google Drive, whatever platform the school uses to send you materials that the children should study on their own or work on, this can be called an asynchronous platform. What can we do as parents? Well, first of all, um, I realized after a week of online school that I, I ignored this aspect. So starting with the second, second week, uh, I helped Yanis get organized. They are not familiar with this. They don't know. I mean, even if they did um, uh, IT classes in school, they still don't know how to get organized. And I, I thought that it's very, very important to show them how to organize materials on their computer or phone or um, uh, tablet. So whatever device you use, it's good to create an online a school folder, something that is only for online school. And inside that folder, you should create with them folders for each subject matter. And this is a screenshot from Yanis's computer with the folders for his classes. So inside each folder, he has the materials he received. And I also showed him how to rename the materials in order to include the subject and the date. Now, for me, logically, I would include the date that the material is due to be handed in. But Yanis found, finds it more logical to put the date when he received the material. And I didn't push it. If this works for him, it's fine with me. So he just, for whatever material he receives, he just changes the title and he puts, I don't know, Romanian 23rd April or English uh 22nd of april yesterday he got some english homework and this made a huge difference it's something so simple but i somehow ignored it the first week and things got messy very very quickly because lots of materials came in and he didn't know what to do with them while we try to help them and get organized we should also try to make them a bit more autonomous so uh Again, what worked for us, because uh, as I told you, this is our experience and this is what has worked for us. I created a, a personal email account for him. And I created it as an extension of my email. Um, uh, I use the Gmail because this is uh, where I have my, my email. Uh, and you can create uh, accounts for children, which means that they cannot log in on their own. They need your approval. And you have you, you can also see what um, uh, is in the inbox because let's not forget uh, children can be exposed to a lot of uh, weird things on the internet. So let's try to keep things safe. So if you create a personal account, connect it to yours and take a look regularly to see what is happening in their inbox. We should also make sure that we uh, show them some online tools and I will come back to this. 
But again, remember, we are the parents, not the teachers, and we are not the students. So remember that the materials are sent for the children, not the parents. While you can support them and, and maybe help them with some things, do not do the work for them. And also do not be afraid. If they come with strange questions, I think it's perfectly all right to say, I'm sorry, I did my this in school many, many years ago. I don't remember it because I don't use it daily, but you should know it. So why don't you look it up? You can um, look it up together or ask them to look it up or ask your teacher. That's perfectly okay. I think more and more children understand nowadays that uh, you don't have to know the information because the information is easily accessible now. You have to know how to use it. So they do not expect parents to know everything because uh, again, teachers do not know everything, but maybe teachers can, um, can uh, manage things better by saying, hmm, I don't know, it sounds like a good question. Why don't we study it and discuss it next time? It's perfectly okay. Um, maybe you saw, uh, I, I saw on Facebook uh, just yesterday, <laughs> um, a mother with uh, the, the child's uh, course book. Where was she? Under the desk. So the child was asked question by the teacher and uh, uh, the mother would suggest the answers from under the desk. No, a big no, <laughs> no. So the children should be left to work as if they were in school. We shouldn't interfere too much unless there's really a technical problem. They should manage their own work. Uh, I mentioned uh, support in terms of technology. Now, what do we do with all these materials that come in? Um, for my son, um, uh, it was difficult to, to print them, to print all these materials because we don't have a printer here in our mountain house. Maybe some of you don't have a printer either. So what do we do? One option, of course, is for the child to look at the screen and write uh, the answers in their notebook. It's okay, it's perfectly okay. If you have the, the printer, you can just print the materials, they work on them. In both situations, I think it's really useful to use your phone or your tablet to take pictures of their notebooks or uh, the materials they worked on and send them back to the teacher. It, it helps a lot if the teachers receive the materials uh, in the same organized way that we have them. So just write maybe the name of the child, the subject matter and the date. But uh, since we don't have a printer and I didn't want him to continue looking at the screen, at the notebook, at the screen, at the notebook, I, go, I get dizzy when I do that. Um, I uh, reminded him that he actually studied in school this tool, uh, Paint, uh, and uh, you can use any kind of program that edits photos. So when he receives pictures, photos, he opens the materials in, um, uh, with, with Paint or Paint 3D, whatever you prefer, or whatever other program for editing pictures you have, and he just types the answers. I think it's a bit more difficult to do something like this in your notebook because you, he should copy um, the, all, the, all the lines and the cross and down and the definitions and it's complicated. So he just types the uh, answers directly here. He saves them, he sends the material back to the teacher. Uh, I just wanted to show you one more example. The English teacher quite often gives them PDFs. Now, if it's a PDF, you can do the same thing as for the pictures. How? You can take a screenshot and then you can see the PDF as a picture and you repeat the procedure I described before. You open it with an editing program, a photo editing program, and they can type directly on them. You can see here, he was supposed to make uh, questions with the present perfect and uh, he typed directly here. Again, this is something that we didn't do at first, but it got really, really uh, strange to, to organize things. And then um, uh, actually uh, a mother from uh, uh, our group of parents so, uh, said, hmm, maybe we could use uh, paint because they learned it in school. They could open the documents, type directly um, on them and that's it. And it works really, really well. If not, as I said, ask them to write in, in, the, in their notebooks, take pictures of their work, send them to the teachers. 
uh, I realized that uh, some of you uh, were uh, very much in agreement with me when I said that it's important to, to have some sort of routine and schedule. And um, even if it's asynchronous, even if the school doesn't impose a schedule, um, you should still make sure that the child does the school work more or less around the same time of the day. Maybe they're not morning people, it's okay. You can tell them to, to do their work in the afternoon but should, it should be more or less around the same, uh, around the same time. And um, you should include some breaks. Even if it's asynchronous, tell them, as soon as you finish with this subject matter, you have a five or 10 minute break, stand up, do something else, and then you'll come back for the next subject matter. And if, even if it's asynchronous, please make sure that you talk to the school and you suggest some synchronous meetings. The social aspect of learning and the feeling of belonging to a community should not be neglected. I mean, uh, these children are not only about learning and getting information and doing lots of uh, worksheets. Learning is also about connecting with the others. And especially in this period of time, it's very, very important for them to see that the school hasn't forgotten them and they are still uh, in touch with the, with the teachers and with the other learners. Maybe the school, as I said, does not have the uh, logistics uh, to, to set up a synchronous meeting, but maybe you can do that in an informal way. You just say, okay, why don't we have a little get together online if you want to use Zoom or any other platform like um, Microsoft Meets or whatever whatever synchronous platform you, you are familiar with, just give them a link and say, we'll meet this afternoon for 30 minutes for the children to see each other, to have a chat. This is very, very important. If the school agrees to, uh, to do that, they will, get, uh, they will uh, take care of it, of it. If not, you can just set it up yourself because I think uh, this, uh, this uh, connection with the others is truly important. Now, those were the tips for, uh, yes, Finita. <laughs> Sorry, Christiana. Yes. Um, I know that you still have a few slides uh, talking about yes. the platform. Uh, probably mm -hmm. you can have like 10 minutes to... Um, I'm uh, going to go a bit faster through them. <laughs> this so that we have time for Q&A. Sure. There are many questions that uh, oh, great. <laughs> I want you to answer. Thank you. Sorry. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Finita. Thank you. That, that's very kind of you to, to remind me of this. So for the platform, uh, so for the synchronous platforms, you will recognize some things. That's why I said we can go a bit faster because some things are somehow common. Um, if your school, uh, your children's school, organizes uh, video conferences and they actually have classes, well, then we should first of all get informed about the platform, read about it, watch some tutorials. The tutorials are usually a few minutes long, so it won't take too long. Try the platform yourself. Um, so uh, that you understand the, if they cry help, what you need to do. And if you have any problems or concerns, if you're not sure about security or about uh, how things are done, just discuss with the parents and with the teachers. Uh, this is uh, one of my son's classmates <laughs> and uh, I asked for permission to, to use her picture. Uh, you remember what we said about that uh, uh, classroom from home? It's the same thing here, absolutely the same thing. They should have that little space like a desk. Uh, it should be quite well organized. They should have all the course books and notebooks at hand. Of course, they should have some sort of device, um, a laptop or uh, a phone, um, a tablet. It's very important to have a headset. Um, even simple ones like, like mine, the ones that we use for our phones will help and uh, um, the conference uh, will be uh, better for, to follow. It will be easier to follow. And you should keep all the distractions away <laughs> because I realized that my son, while he was listening to the teacher, was also playing with something with his hands. It doesn't help much because then he loses track. So we made a convention, uh, nothing related to, to having fun um, uh, during those hours when he is in the virtual classroom. We keep any unnecessary books or toys out um, uh, of, uh, not on the desk, somewhere closer. Then um, I really appreciated the effort my uh, sound school made to, to have from the second week of online school, they made a set of rules um, like uh, netiquette or rules that uh, 
both teachers and learners should follow. Um, if your school uh, did not do that, you should discuss them, you should negotiate them with the teachers, the parents and the learners. They are very much aware that they cannot work properly if they don't have some rules. And some examples of things you might want to address would be the correct use of microphone, to mute your microphone when you're not speaking. And uh, if you want to speak, to raise the virtual hand, many platforms use such a virtual hand to, to uh, show your intention to speak. You should also, uh, or if that is not the case, negotiate some sort of code or symbol they can put in the chat to show the teacher they want to speak. You should tell learners to avoid emoticons and texting uh, writing. It's still school, so the, the, the language used should be academic. Uh, communication online is not very different from face-to-face -face communication, so they should still be very polite with each other and with the teachers. And you, they should be involved. They should uh, participate actively, not just uh, passively uh, watch the screen. They should actually be there, truly be there and work. Um, a very important thing, I told you about how Yanis was not used to technology before this period of time, and this has helped us a lot. Uh, I know from my personal experience, it took me years to learn this. Um, if you stay too long in front of the computer, you get to burn out very quickly. So I make sure that I know his timetable, and um, uh, even now, while we were speaking, I checked the time and I listened because he finished the class, um, 15 minutes ago and I listened if he did what I told him because I told him when the class is over log off and do something else and I, I heard him make sure that they completely stop not just you know uh, mute the platform no they should log out and do something else you can find lots of stretching exercises uh, sometimes what we do, I, I put on a song and we just fool around and dance and do silly moves, do some light. And some, so his eyes are uh, sometimes tired. He, he knows uh, a few exercises for the eyes. When we look at the computer, we look straight ahead and usually at one point. So he learned how to do exercises, look sideways, up, down, how to rotate his eyes. So it's very, very good. And uh, sometimes we are lucky because we are, uh, uh, as I told you, completely isolated from the world. So we can go outside. If you have a courtyard or a balcony, a terrace, they can go out and, um, and take some fresh air. And finally, if they do online school synchronously, I think it's very important that we reduce the screen time spent outside the online classes because it's too much. If they study in the morning, four, five, six hours, um, and then in the afternoon, they want to play some more. Um, it's, it's just too much. So just try, I know it's difficult. I know it's very easy sometimes to, to uh, give them a tablet or a phone and keep them busy for a while. It's okay for, you know, for a limited period of time, but we shouldn't do that regularly. And we shouldn't encourage them to spend too much time online because they do know <laughs> they actually spend more time than we would like them to. And I guess that's the end of my presentation. And I look forward to uh, looking at the questions we have and the comments, because as I said, I'm sure that you have some good tips. So if you have them, please share them in the chat. So finita. Oh, thank you so much, Christiana. It's a very thank fruitful you. explanation. And uh, while I was listening to you, I keep saying, I wished we had listened to these tips like two weeks, three weeks ago. <laughs> but it's not this. too late because as I said, it's going to last, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. So I've tried to summarize some questions for you. Basically, right. there are three types of questions from three different mm -hmm. perspectives. The first okay. one is from the perspective of parents. Second is from the perspective of teachers and the other one is from the perspective of the double agent, parents and teachers. <laughs> okay. So I will start with, uh, questions from parents. Uh, okay. Do you have any suggestions on how to make the kids be responsible for uh, their learning? Because yes, you also mentioned that while they have to uh, do some tasks, they also want to do other things because they're at home. Do, mm -hmm. they need, do parents need to set up a kind of routines like the school routine, start to mm -hmm. learn in the morning, etc.? 
So yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I think they, they can become a more responsible if they are aware that just like in school, uh, they are assessed and they are assessed, not the parents, not the other people around them. So although assessment um, sometimes is viewed negatively, it can be a good motivational tool because it can show the children they need to, to uh, uh, be responsible to be in charge of their own uh, learning. Um, it also helps if you just tell them that um, I'm not doing this. I did my school years. You have to do this now. I, I can help you, but I'm not going to do this for you. So it, it just draw, draw the line. Just tell them, no, I'm not going to, to do this with you or for you. I can help you with some aspects, but not with everything. So define, make it clear for the children what you can do for them and what you can help them with and what is their responsibility. So uh, I, would, I would just be very, very clear on that. And another thing, I think it's also related to the video that you saw. Uh, mm -hmm. They also asked whether or not it is okay for them to complain to teachers about the abandon of tasks that the children have or the platform yeah. that they I, get. I think because many of us here are also teachers, I think it's perfectly okay. To, to talk to the teachers. Of course, as I said, in a polite and uh, very respectful way, but we should just tell them, uh, just bear in mind, remind them, ask them, you know, uh, uh, I, I checked yesterday and it took my, my child a number of minutes to do the tasks for your subject matter, but you also had to deal with similar tasks for the other subject matters. And that totals up to, and you give them the number of minutes or hours, this is not okay, what can we do? So you, the idea would be maybe to come up with also with raise the, um, the point and also come up with a suggestion. Maybe we can uh, have a better schedule or um, postpone the deadline for submitting a, set, a longer task or just uh, distribute the work uh, uh, together. Do you know why this is important? Because uh, teachers before used to meet in the teacher's classroom and they could in the teacher's room and they would exchange ideas and they would be aware when maybe they gave too much to, to uh, work at home but now maybe they are not necessarily in touch and they are not aware of the amount of work and the workload we impose on the children so it's perfectly okay to tell uh, uh, teachers that you have concerns about that and as I said come up with some solutions suggest some ways out of this oh okay so uh, we have the similar questions from different perspectives switching okay. to <laughs> uh, the teacher's shoes uh, yes. How would teachers deal with uh, parents when they have complained? How should teachers communicate with parents and cooperate with parents during this remote teaching? I think it's, uh, again, uh, important to stay in touch with the parents. Um, I, I think most of the classes have a, a class um, Facebook group or WhatsApp group, and the teachers should be invited uh, to be part of that. Uh, and stay in touch with them constantly and somehow explain uh, that. As a teacher, um, you have to understand the parents because it's a lot to take on all of a sudden. And we have to, um, what we discussed today can be explained to the parents as well. In a way, if you want, as, as teachers, we also, also have the responsibility to uh, educate the parents in terms of what they can do and what they can't do. So just say is it too much for you as a parent is it too much for the child what can we do how can it find solutions together it's also very important to understand if you're talking about one person in the class who's having a problem two people 10 15 if it's more than two i would be worried and try to look at what am i doing wrong is it too much is it am i not explaining things properly what's going on so just um take into account the, the, the particular situation. Is it just one parent who maybe cannot cope or is it everybody and then we should take some measures? All right, thank you very much. I think this would be the last question for you. Um, okay. I believe that you have explained this at the beginning but uh, some questions uh, came up about being a double agent and you are experienced this, experiencing this at the moment being a teacher and a parent at the same time. So exactly. how did you cope? How do you cope with this? And maybe you can share your experience again. 
Yeah, so as I said, my work is mainly online. Uh, now it's only online. Uh, I work both as a teacher educator and an examiner. And uh, me as an adult uh, have the benefit of um, uh, having platforms that actually guide me. I told you that it took me some years to understand how to organize my work, how to organize breaks for myself. But for instance, I'm an examiner for the British Council Aptis test, which is online. And the platform reminds me, you've been marking for a while today. You should stand up, stretch, I don't know. So I have these pop-up messages. And it, I actually learned this, this is important. It, it may not sound like a big deal to, to take a break for five minutes, but it makes a difference. So um, as, a, um, uh, as a professional, let's say, who works online, I learned to do more or less the same things. I have some office hours. I try to make it very clear when I'm not available and when I focus on my family and on my, uh, I have some me time, I can read, I can uh, uh, do some sports, do yoga, whatever. Uh, but uh, when I'm online and when I'm available, I'm 100% focused and uh, the, my benefit is that my son got used to this. Remember, I've been doing this for 10 years. He knows that when mommy is working, he's not to disturb me. Uh, and apart from the occasional appearance that he makes in some of my video conferences, just to say hello, he loves to meet uh, people from all over the world. Um, he knows he doesn't have, he, he cannot disturb me. And I do the same for him. It's a mutual thing. I told him, I know you have online classes. Uh, in the first, the first week uh, was a bit more hectic. Maybe the first day I was more present, he would ask for my help more often. But afterwards, he once I taught him how to organize things, how to manage things on the platforms, uh, he is quite responsible, but I do check on him, okay? I do trust him, but I just make sure that he understood it properly because maybe he says, oh, I got it, but then he actually didn't. Or I just uh, check that he organizes things regularly. It's not enough if you organize materials for one day and the next day you completely forget about them. So I, I, I juggle both roles in similar ways. I count on, um, uh, on his uh, responsibility. We were talking about responsibility earlier, uh, but I also would try to be there as a parent. As parents, we wouldn't let them manage on their own. We wouldn't throw them at the deep end and hope they will swim. We have to do the same here. It's new for them too. It's new for us, it's new for the teachers, but it's new for them too. So have them, but when you work, it's work time for you. When they study, it's study uh, time for them, not for you. <laughs> you're, not the, you're not the teacher, you're not the learner. <laughs> okay, so we really should know our roles as parents or as the teacher. Exactly, and don't yeah. them. I know it's difficult, but don't. It's difficult. Them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, many, many of the participants asked about the suggestions on technology with low access. I don't know if this is a case in your context. Probably, uh, I will also pass these questions to Pak Jati later. Uh, well, do you have any suggestions? In Indonesia, uh, some of us uh, got problem with uh, internet connection or low access and zero access to technology. You might right. have information on that, on this. We actually do have problems, um, but it's also a matter of uh, voicing those concerns. Let me explain what I mean. Um, in, uh, in our city mainly, uh, we are turning into a digital city. We have lots of IT companies. And when the whole thing started, I was surprised to notice that actually I had a better connection in the mountains where I don't have a cable, internet um, uh, by cable. Um, and normally the, the connection wouldn't be so good, but I had better connection than the people in the city. Why? Because the, the pressure on uh, the networks in the city was so huge all of a sudden that um, uh, platforms crashed, people had problems students couldn't follow the online classes. So we looked for different uh, solutions inside our small universe, which was our class. We agreed, for instance, that during online classes, uh, all the learners should have the, uh, the videos, the, the cameras off, because that actually takes a lot of bandwidth. So if they have synchronous um, classes, although it helps to see the learners, to see that they are engaged, uh, for uh, technical reasons, they keep them off and only the teacher has the, the camera on. That helps them in a way to focus on the teacher and it improves the connection. On the other hand, I know that lots of uh, parents 
called their IT providers and they complained about the situation because we didn't we had very good connections and Romania I think is number two in the world in terms of up of upload and download speed so uh, they complained and companies reacted quickly then my suggestion my personal suggestion is to have multiple multiple sources of internet as I told you we have three uh, routers there over there but I also have two phones uh, with unlimited internet and if anything crashes on um, the, the routers, I just uh, uh, create a hotspot from my phone. That is also very helpful because, so ju just have several alternatives. Don't rely on one thing. Even if it used to work very well for you, just think about the fact that now you have three, four, five members of the family connected on the same network doing video conferences. Video conferences is not the same as, I don't know, just uh, reading online. It takes a lot of bandwidth. So try to come up with a variety of sources Maybe parents can use uh, the phone while the, the, the children are, are using uh, uh, the laptops while they are studying. Uh, for the teachers, it's a whole different discussion and I'm sure you have discussed them before, how to, uh, even if you teach asynchronously what to do. So um, just try to, to be creative and ask, uh, it depends on the context as you said as well, but in our case, uh, the internet providers reacted quickly and they realized it's an opportunity not to uh, let people down because then they would change subscri uh, subscription, so. Okay, thank you so much. I, I want to pass it to Pak Jati. Probably Pak Jati, you have some suggestions on uh, coping with this zero access, low internet connection. Um, um, just, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, just a very quick one. Uh, I've been working in the South Kalimantan in a remote area. Um, my suggestion is if you're in that condition, if it's, it's only a mobile phone that you have, start thinking of how to communicate with my students and how to communicate with the parents. Not teaching, not about learning, mm -hmm. forget about that, but how to communicate with them, how to reach them, they need help. Mm -hmm. And then if you can get there, communicate with them and you start understand their situation, probably you can start, okay, I give you a task with this, do it with your parent and so on and so on without technology. Usually people who live in a remote area, they are rich with environment, not necessarily with high tech, but they can yeah. do, do uh, biology on the field or mathematics using, I don't know, a lot of resources and um, around their, their homes. That's my quick response. Thank you, Vin. Thank you, Pajati. And also, I think, Colm, you would like to say, uh, give your suggestions related to this. Hand over to you. Hi, Felita. Yeah, it's a question that um, I'm talking to lots of teachers in Indonesia about because we know that you know, many people don't have a good internet connection. Um, so there are a couple of recommendations I would make. One is, well, let's take this webinar to begin with as an example. So we are recording this webinar. And I know, looking at our previous webinars, that many teachers that have tried to connect, some of, some of you would have had trouble during this webinar and your connection would have lost and you had to reconnect and you would have lost and had to reconnect and maybe a number of times um, and it would have been very frustrating. So I'm, I know I, I feel a lot of sympathy for you. That happened to me even at the beginning <laughs> of this webinar. So one of the things that we can do is when you have a, a live session is make sure that you record it and then you can send that recording to people afterwards. And it might take them a long time to download the recording, but at least they'll have that recording afterwards. And that's also one of the benefits, I think, of, of technology now is that these lessons can be uh, watched many, many times. You know, so if you miss something, you can go back in the recording and, and see it again. So that's you know, one suggestion is to record um, you know, your synchronous sessions. But also, I think, you know, before this uh, situation where, you know, where we talked about online learning, for many years we've been using simple tools to communicate with people. I mean, email and text messages and using WhatsApp, um, all of these kind of asynchronous tools are vitally important. I mean, you can send voicemail messages to people, you can take photographs and convert them into PDFs. So, you know, make use of recorded messages, 
and traditional emails and uh, and voicemail and, and WhatsApp messages to keep in touch with parents and, and students as much as possible. Yeah, and, and just stay connected. All right, I think maybe- And, and voice, yeah. voice recordings and even a very short screencast can be a good way to teach even asynchronously. As you said, not long recordings because then it, they would take a long, a long time to, to download but very short videos in which you explain something because it's difficult to teach asynchronously. You, you just have the feeling that you throw things at the learners and the parents. But if you make short videos or you record an explanation by voice, it makes a, a, a huge difference for, for the learners. Yeah. We'll have to have a whole new webinar on low <laughs> and low yes. tech solutions. Yeah, exactly. we, keep, we keep finding new topics for the next webinar. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Christiana, Pajati. Thank and you. Uh, thanks for the very resourceful and fruitful explanation for us as teachers, as parents, and also for as double agents. Uh, yeah. Hope you are okay there, regards to your family, your kids there. Thank you. Thank you very much and thank you everybody. It's, it was so lovely to see people joining us from all over the world and to see some Romanians yes. too. That, that's very nice you know, to, <laughs> to see. I think this is a great time to be grateful for technology. I told you I used to be a technophobe. Uh, now, I'm, now I work uh, with technology a lot I, and I appreciate it. And just the fact that we can bring people uh, from different countries, sharing the same concerns, sharing a global problem, makes us realize that we can use technology to find global solutions because we all face the same context actually now. We are all in the same situation and together we can find very good solutions. Exactly. It's great to feel that we are all connected facing the same problem. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks again, Christiana. And for everybody, I believe that you are all giving a big applause. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> That's all very right, kind. before... Before I close this um, webinar, I would like to share, um, wait a minute, this is what I'm going to share. So this is the QR code to create Christiana's um, PowerPoint slides. Uh, you can take a picture or scan the QR code there. I give you some time to scan the QR code or screenshot, take a picture. But if you don't have any code reader, you can also access it in our website, itel.or.id. I have uploaded uh, just now. And also please drop your feedback for us for this presentation by accessing that uh, link, et underscore tech talk SS2. Uh, this is a feedback for, uh, for us so that we know what to do, what, to, what we need to a fix for the next uh, webinar. Please make a screenshot of that and don't forget Th tomorrow. Thank you very much, Finita. You are a technology goddess. <laughs> you manage <laughs> everything so quickly. <laughs> it's, it's Thank you. you someone who manages so easily uh, in, uh, uh, online. And one more thing tomorrow, 10 a.m. in the morning, we still have uh, special guests. Uh, Graham Stanley. He's going to talk about remote teaching, a survival guide, guide for school teachers. I watched uh, his presentation like two weeks ago. It was amazing. So I believe that you should come and join us. Probably for some participants from the other side of the world, this is not the perfect time <laughs> for you. But for Indonesian, this is early in the morning. <laughs> So thank you very much. Um, let me get back to this link while closing this presentation. Thank you, Christiana. Thank you, Pajati. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you, everybody. Yeah, I, I'm so impressed with people's warmth and reactions. And thank you very much. It's, it's been lovely talking to you. Thanks, Christiana. All right, thank thank you. Thanks for all yeah. of you joining us. And take care. Stay safe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.